Okay, let's go to the next sutta. 115. Bahu Datuka Sutta. The many kinds of elements. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, in Pindika's Park. There he addressed the monks thus, Monks, noble sir, they replied. The Blessed One said, Monks, whatever fears arise, all arise because of the fool, not because of the wise man. Whatever troubles arise, all arise because of the fool, not because of the wise man. Whatever calamities arise, all arise because of the fool, not because of the wise man. This is a fire that starts in a shed made of rushes or grass, burns down even a house with a peak roof. It was plastered inside and outside, shut off, secured by bars with shuttered windows. So two monks, whatever fears arise, all arise of the, because of the fool, not because of the wise man. Thus the fool brings fear, the wise man brings no fear. The fool brings trouble, the wise man brings no trouble. The fool brings calamity, the wise man brings no calamity. No fear comes from the wise man, no trouble comes from the wise man, no calamity comes from the wise man. Therefore, monks, you should train thus. We shall be wise men, we shall be inquirers. I'll stop you for a moment. So here the Buddha says uh, all problems in the world uh, because arise because of foolish people. Uh, uh, foolish people create problems for themselves as well as for others. Uh. Also as far as fear is concerned, uh, uh, our mind state is very important. Fears arise uh, because we have fear inside of us. Uh, uh, sometimes we put the blame outside. Uh, but uh, actually, fear arises because we have fear inside. Uh, if there were, we do not have fear inside, uh, and whatever happens outside, uh, we would not have fear. Uh, so, um, so, okay, let's see what is elaborated. When this was said, the Venerable Ananda asked the Blessed One, In what way, Venerable Sir, can a monk be called a wise man and an inquirer? When Ananda, a monk, is skilled in the elements, skilled in the basis, skilled in dependent origination, skilled in what is possible and what is impossible, in that way he can be called a wise man and an inquirer. But Venerable Sir, in what way can a monk be called skilled in the elements? There are, Ananda, these 18 elements, the I element, the form element, the I consciousness element, the ear element, the sound element, the ear consciousness element, the nose element, the odor element, the nose consciousness element, the tongue element, the flavor element, the tongue consciousness element, the body element, the tangible element, the body consciousness element, the mind element, the mind object element, the mind consciousness element. When he knows and sees these 18 elements, a monk can be called skilled in the elements. Stop here for a moment. Uh, this is talking about the six sense basis, uh, salayatana, uh, and the internal uh, sense base uh, are the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And the corresponding objects uh, are form, sound, uh, smells, taste, touch, and thoughts. Uh, so, for the, each of the uh, sense bases, uh, when you have a good eye and form appears before the eye, uh, the eye consciousness will arise. Uh, similarly, for the other sense base, bases. Uh. But, Venerable Sir, might there be another way in which a monk can be called skilled in the elements? There might be an ananda. There are ananda, these six elements. The earth element, water element, fire element, air element, space element, and the consciousness element. When he knows and sees these six elements, a monk can be called skilled in the elements. So these are the, the four great elements, uh, earth, water, fire, and air or wind, uh, makes up the rupa. Rupa, rupa is defined as the four great elements, uh, or the materiality. Uh, arising for the great, four great elements. So the space element and the um, space element and the consciousness element. Okay.
okay. Consciousness element is part of the mind. But Ben Rousseau, might there be another way in which a monk can be called skilled in the elements? There might be an anda. There are an anda, these six elements. The pleasure element, the pain element, the joy element, the grief element, the equanimity element, and the ignorance element. When he knows and sees these six elements, a monk can be called skilled in the elements. So here, the pleasure and pain uh, element uh, uh, refers to the body, uh, pleasure and pain. Joy and grief refers to the mental uh, and the equanimity element and the ignorance. Uh, when, the, uh, when there is neither pain nor joy, uh, uh, and if that person is aware of it, uh, then he feels equanimity, uh, the equanimity element. Uh. But usually the uh, neither painful nor pleasant uh, feeling, uh, because it is not uh, like pain or, or, or pleasure, uh, it tends to be ignored. Uh, so then you get the ignorance element. Uh. But Venerable Sir, might there be another way in which a monk can be called skilled in the elements? There might be ananda. There are ananda, these six elements, sensual desire element, renunciation element, ill will element, non-ill will element, cruelty element, and the non-cruelty element. When he knows and sees these six elements, a monk can be called skilled in the elements. So these uh, six uh, refers to the wrong and the right thoughts. Uh, uh, right thoughts are uh, thoughts of renunciation, non ill will, and non cruelty, uh, and wrong thoughts are the opposite. Uh. But, Venerable Sir, might there be another way in which a monk can be called skilled in the elements? There might be ananda. There are ananda, these three elements sense fear element, fine material element, and the immaterial element. When he knows and sees these three elements, a monk can be called skilled in the elements. Uh, this refers to the Kama Loka, Rupa Loka, and Arupa Loka, the sense fear uh, realm, uh, the form realm and the formless realm, uh, the three planes of existence uh, in a world system. But Venerable Sir, might there be another way in which a monk can be called skilled in the elements? There might be Ananda. There are Ananda, these two elements, the conditioned and element and the unconditioned element. When he knows and sees these two elements, a monk can be called skilled in the elements. Uh, this uh, condition uh, refers to everything in the world and uh, the universe. Uh, and the unconditioned is Nibbana. Uh, but Venerable Sir, in what way can a monk be called skilled in the basis? There are Ananda, these six internal and external bases, the eye and forms, ear and sounds, nose and odors, tongue and flavors, body and tangibles, mind and mind objects. When he knows and sees these six internal and external bases, a monk can be called skilled in the bases. So this uh, refers to the six sense bases, uh, which we already mentioned just now. But Venerable Sir, in what way can a monk be called skilled in dependent origination? Here, Ananda, a monk knows thus, when this exists, that comes to be. With the arising of this, that arises. When this does not exist, that does not come to be. With the cessation of this, that ceases. That is, with ignorance as condition, volition comes to be. With volition as condition, consciousness. With consciousness as condition, mentality, materiality. With mentality, materiality as condition, the sixfold base. With the sixfold base as condition, contact. With contact as condition, feeling. With feeling as condition, craving. With craving as condition, clinging. With clinging as condition, being. With being as condition, birth. With birth as condition, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair come to be. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. Uh, with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance, there comes cessation of volition. With the cessation of volition, cessation of consciousness. With the cessation of consciousness, cessation of mentality, materiality. With the cessation of mentality, materiality, cessation of the sixfold base. With the cessation of the sixfold base, cessation of contact. With the cessation of contact, cessation of feeling. With the cessation of feeling, cessation of craving. 
with the cessation of craving, cessation of clinging, with the cessation of clinging, cessation of being, with the cessation of being, cessation of birth, with the cessation of birth, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair cease. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. In this way, Ananda, a monk, can be called skill in dependent origination. In this uh, dependent origination, uh, the Buddha says, uh, everything in the world uh, arises due to causes and conditions. Uh. So the basic formula, uh, when this exists, that comes to be. Uh, because something exists, uh, it brings about the existence of something else. Uh. Because something arises, uh, it causes some other thing to arise. Uh. But when something ceases, uh, it causes some other things to cease. Uh. Uh. So, as far as suffering is concerned, uh, the 12 links of dependent origination uh, are stated here. Uh, first condition uh, uh, for suffering to arise uh, is ignorance, uh, ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. Uh, when we don't know the Dhamma, we keep turning it around of rebirths, uh, suffering. So, ignorance because of ignorance, uh, we have volition, uh, volition basically the will to live. Uh, uh, so, it is because of the will to live. Uh, that consciousness arises. Consciousness, as I mentioned before, is not an ending stream of consciousness. Consciousness arises and passes away extremely fast. In one second, many, many times, this consciousness arises and passes away. Consciousness arises and passes away. So each time it passes away, it is volition, the will to live, that makes the next consciousness arise again. So. Consciousness keeps arising uh, because of our will to live. Uh. So our will to live uh, is very strong. Uh, it causes consciousness to arise. Uh. So when consciousness arises, uh, it is follow, It is comes together with nama rupa, uh, mentality, materiality, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, what we are conscious of uh, makes up the world. Uh. Uh, so mentality, materiality makes up the internal world and the external world. Uh. So. Um, after that, uh, you have uh, salayatana, the sixfold base, la, the six sense bases, la, because consciousness uh, must lodge itself uh, or must uh, arise uh, at the six sense bases, la, because there are six types of consciousness: la, the eye consciousness, uh, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind consciousness. La, uh, so uh, that arises at the six sense bases. La. So that's why you have six sense bases. And when you have the six sense bases, uh, you have contact, uh, the internal uh, sense base uh, and the external sense base uh, makes contact. Uh, and when there is contact, feeling arises. Uh, and if you have pleasant feeling, uh, then you crave for it. Uh, you crave for it and you cling to it. Uh, craving is followed by clinging. Uh, and because of craving and clinging, uh, this being arises. Uh, uh, you have this perception, I exist, la. I want this, la. I cannot live without this. La. Uh, so that being, that I comes into existence. La. So that's why sometimes it's translated as being, la. sometimes it's translated as existence. La. So once you have being, la, you see yourself existing in the world, la. then you, you think that you are born into the world. La. Uh, and if you don't have being, then you don't think that you are born. You're just like a tree. A tree doesn't think it is born in the world. But because you have a being, then you think, I am born. So when you see yourself born into the world, and then later you will age and become sick and die. And all types of sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair arise. This is the origin of the whole mass of suffering. So... The converse is true, uh, when one seizes and uh, causes the other to seize, uh, uh, just like domino. Uh, uh. Okay, but remember, sir, in what way can a monk be called skilled in the in what is possible and what is impossible? Here, Ananda, a monk understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that a person possessing right view could treat any volition as permanent. There is no such possibility. And he understands, it is possible that an ordinary person might treat some volition as permanent. There is such a possibility. He understands, it is impossible, it cannot happen that a person possessing right view could treat any volition as pleasurable. There is no such possibility. And he understands, it is possible that an ordinary person might treat some volition as 
pleasurable, there is such a possibility. He understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that a person possessing right view could treat anything as self. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that an ordinary person might treat something as self. There is such a possibility. Let's stop here for a moment. Huh? So here this word, huh, Sankara, huh? Uh, a lot of books translate it as formation uh, or volitional formation uh, or mental formation but uh, I prefer this word volition volition or intention because in many cases uh, that we see uh, that uh, uh, this word Sankara means volition for example in the five aggregates uh, and in the dependent origination and uh, there is a saying, Sabe Sankara Anichati, all volitions are impermanent. Why? Because uh, I feel uh, uh, that the world uh, is created by volition. Whenever we have volition, uh, we cause something to happen, will, our will, uh, we cause something to happen. So uh, things uh, uh, happen. Uh, in the world, uh, basically, uh, the creator of the world, uh, I think, uh, is volition. Uh, that's my view. Uh, yeah. So, if volition is impermanent uh, and volition causes things to appear, then uh, uh, since what appears in the world uh, depends on volition, which is impermanent, uh, and whatever appears uh, is even more impermanent. Just as the Buddha said, uh, a tree uh, causes a shadow to appear. Uh, and the shadow uh, is impermanent. The shadow depends on the tree, depends on sunlight uh, and other conditions. So if the conditions for the shadow to appear, uh, namely the sunlight, the tree and all that, uh, is impermanent, uh, then the shadow is even more impermanent. Uh, so that's why uh, if volition is impermanent, uh, then Volition uh, is the condition for other things to appear, uh, then uh, other things are even more impermanent. Uh, uh, okay. He understands, it is impossible, it cannot happen that a person possessing right view could deprive his mother of life. There is no such possibility. And he understands, it is possible that an ordinary person might deprive his mother of life. There is such a possibility. He understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that a person possessing right view could deprive his father of life, could deprive an arahan of life. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that an ordinary person might deprive his father of life, might deprive an arahan of life. There is such a possibility. He understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that a person possessing right view could with the mind of hatred shed a Tathagata's blood. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that an ordinary person might with the mind of hatred shed a Tathagata's blood. There is such a possibility. He understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that a person possessing right view could cause a schism in the Sangha, uh, could acknowledge another teacher. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that an ordinary person might cause a schism in the Sangha, might acknowledge another teacher. There is such a possibility. Stop here for a moment. Here refers to six things. The first five are the heaviest coming offenses, evil coming offenses that somebody can do. These five is to kill your mother, to kill your father, to kill an arahan, then to intentionally uh, injure a uh, Samasambuddha, causing the blood to flow. La. And the fifth one la, is to cause a schism of the Sangha, la. a Sangha of monks la, that is in concord. La. You cause the Sangha to split into two Sanghas. Uh, so these, uh, these five la, are the heaviest karmic offenses a person can do. La. And if anyone does one of these five deeds, la, uh, the moment he dies, uh, he will be sure to go to hell for a long time, a uh, world cycle uh, at least. Uh, so the last one, uh, uh, the sixth one, uh, he might acknowledge another teacher. This one, uh, Arya, if a person becomes an Arya, a noble person, uh, he will 
he will acknowledge uh, that his teacher uh, is the Buddha. Uh, Buddha acknowledge the Triple Gem uh, as his uh, refuge. Uh, and he will not follow another teacher. Uh, but an uh, ordinary person, uh, Putujana, uh, can follow another teacher even after coming to Buddhism. Uh, he understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that two Arahans, Samasambuddhas, could arise contemporaneously in one world system. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that one Arahan, Samasambuddha, might arise in one world system. There is such a possibility. He understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that two wheel turning monarchs could arise contemporaneously in one world system. It is possible that one wheel turning monarch might arise in one world system. There is such a possibility. So, uh, in the Buddha's teachings, uh, there is uh, at any one time uh, there, there is only one Samasambuddha. Uh, and uh, the Buddha mentioned uh, that he looked into the past 91 world cycles, he only saw six Samasambuddhas. Uh, so it's very difficult to meet a Samasambuddha. But Pacheka Buddhas, uh, there are many, many. Uh, we'll come across that in the next Sutta, uh, the Buddha talks about many Pacheka Buddhas. Uh, so the same uh, with this uh, universal monarch, uh, a wheel turning monarch, uh, is a uh, uh, king uh, who is so good, uh, he rules by Dhamma. Uh, so he's so popular uh, that the whole world, all the countries in the world, uh, want him to rule. So he rules the whole world, the whole, uh, the whole earth. Uh, uh, such a person also is very hard to come across as uh, such a virtuous uh, king. Uh, he understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that a woman could be an Arahan Samasambuddha. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that a man might be an Arahan Samasambuddha. There is such a possibility. He understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that a woman could be a world turn, world wheel turning monarch, that a woman could occupy the position of Saka Devaraja, that a woman could occupy the position of Mara that a woman could occupy the position of Brahma. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that a man might be a wheel-turning monarch, that a, that a man might occupy the position of Sakadevaraja, that a man might occupy the position of Mara, that a man might occupy the position of Brahma. There is such a possibility. I'll stop here for a moment. So here, uh, a woman uh, uh, cannot become these few things, like Samasambuddha. Samasambuddha we know la, because Samasambuddha, I mentioned before, uh, usually uh, is uh, Anagamin, uh, come back the last time. La. So there is no more Dhamma in the world. La. He has to struggle extremely hard. La. The Buddha said la, that when he struggled for enlightenment, la, he suffered so much la, that nobody uh, suffered, no ascetic uh, suffered more than him. La. The Buddha said la, at the most, la, any ascetic in the past, present, or future can only equal uh, the amount of suffering he uh, went through uh, to attain enlightenment. Uh, so uh, a woman uh, cannot stand that type of hardship. Uh, a man can. Uh, and uh, for the other 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 uh, positions, uh, uh, a woman also cannot become Mara, Sakadeva Raja, etc. He understands it is impossible, it cannot happen that an unwished for, undesired, disagreeable result could be produced from good bodily conduct, from good verbal conduct, from good mental conduct. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that a wish for, desired, agreeable result might be produced from good bodily conduct, from good verbal conduct, from good mental conduct. There is such a possibility. He understands it is impossible. It cannot happen that a person engaging in bodily misconduct, engaging in verbal misconduct, engaging in mental misconduct, could on that account, for that reason, on the dissolution of the body after death, we appear in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. There is no such possibility. And he understands it is possible that a person engaging in bodily misconduct engaging in verbal misconduct, engaging in mental misconduct, might on that account, for that reason, on the dissolution of the body after death, we appear in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. There is such a possibility. 
it is he understands it is impossible it can't happen that a person engaging in good bodily conduct engaging in good verbal conduct engaging in good mental conduct could on that account for that reason on the dissolution of the body after death we appear in a state of deprivation in an unhappy destination in perdition even in hell there is no such possibility and he understands it is possible that a person engaging in good bodily conduct engaging in good verbal conduct engaging in good mental conduct might on that account for for that reason on the dissolution of the body after death we appear in a happy destination even in the heavenly world in this way ananda a monk can be called skilled in what is possible and what is impossible so here concerning karma the buddha says karma is such that if you do uh, good uh, karma good conduct uh, through the body speech or mind uh, the uh, result to be expected uh, is that you will get a good liver uh, you will be happy because of that action uh, and if you do some evil uh, harming others uh, with the body speech or mind uh, then you can expect uh, to suffer for it uh, and not the reverse uh, but sometimes uh, karma is so complicated uh, the buddha says uh, sometimes you can happen uh, that a person uh, has has led a good life uh, and he has done more good deeds uh, than evil deeds uh. but at the moment of dying uh, sometimes uh, uh, evil karma from the past uh, might come into his memory uh, just as he is about to die then when he remembers that past evil karma uh, maybe done a few life times ago uh, it is possible uh, that that evil karma can bring him uh, to a woeful destination of rebirth uh. so he goes to a woeful woeful destination of evil and because of some past evil karma not because of the good deeds he has done karma is such that you benefit others you you make others happy you will reap happiness but if you do evil harm others make others unhappy you will suffer for it when this was said the venerable ananda said to the, to the blessed one it is wonderful venerable sir it is marvelous what is the name of this discourse on the dhamma and the buddha said you may remember this discourse on the dhamma ananda as the many kinds of elements or as the four cycles and as the mirror of the dhamma and as the drum of the deathless and as the supreme victory in battle that is what the blessed one said and the venerable ananda was satisfied and delighted in the blessed one's words uh, this is the end of the sutta Okay, I think uh, we we'll see. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all I have to say. These two suttas. Huh? Anything to discuss? Oh no, definitely not, because uh, we have uh, read uh, that uh, uh, Arya will never be reborn in the uh, plains of rebirth. If the Kama was so serious, uh, he could not have become an Arya. Uh, it's only uh, as, we, as, we, as we read some just now, uh, that, uh, let me see, let me see, it's quite interesting. Uh, Mm, yeah the acquisition of individuality in the sutta 114 the buddha says huh, when a person uh, generates an acquisition of individuality that is subject to affliction and wholesome states increase and wholesome states diminish in him preventing him from putting an end to being but when a person generates an acquisition of individuality that is free from affliction and wholesome states diminish and wholesome states increase in him enabling him to put an end to being so if a person becomes an arya he is on his way uh, to 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 end uh, being so he will not uh, be reborn in a woeful plane okay. Harmful what? Say again. It's harmful. Yeah. 
You're the one sweeping the floor, you have to think. <laughs> if you can avoid it, you avoid it. Nah. You may sweep at some other time. Or if you, if you, if you, if you find it's uh, disturbing to you, uh, one thing you can do is you can get a, a pipe, nah. bring the pipe water and uh, uh, jet at them. Nah. Make them go away. So what, what, I, what I did was, it depends, la. for example, like uh, in the sala, uh, we sweep with this soft broom. So if you think you don't kill them, it's okay to sweep. La. Or sometimes like you wash the floor, there's a lot of ants, uh, you, you wash with water, uh, and they go into the drain. Uh, they, they won't die so easily. They go into the drain, then they climb up the drain. Uh, that's okay. La. If you know you don't kill them, uh, then it's okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that is a mitigating factor. But also you must see la, uh, whether it really uh, uh, kills them or not. La. So if you, if you think the possibility is that you don't kill them, then it's okay to sweep them. Nah. But if you think you might kill them, or, uh, or then you don't, you don't do. Nah. You try to sweep some other place. Nah. Nah, it's not too important to to to, to sweep them. Nah. In the Vinaya, the Buddha has stated uh, that uh, his disciples, uh, monks, uh, uh, are not allowed uh, to have communion, uh, that means uh, associate uh, with um, other monks uh, uh, or even uh, Buddhist monks uh, who practice a different Dhamma Vinaya. So if the Dhamma is different, or the Vinaya is different, we're not allowed to associate with them. For example, if they follow a different Dhamma, for example, instead of following the original Buddha suttas, they follow Mahayana suttas. We're not allowed to associate with them because they have different view as far as the Dhamma is concerned. And if they practice a different Vinaya, for example, they don't keep the precepts, huh? also not allowed to associate with them. Huh? Some of the 
can be friendly uh, to a certain extent. Uh, for example, we find in the suttas, uh, sometimes the Buddha and his disciples, uh, sometimes in the morning they want to go on arms round and they see that it's too early to go on arms round. Then they go to the wondrous park and they um, uh, talk to these wondrous. Uh, uh, even though they have different Dhamma Vinaya, uh, just maintain some friendliness. Uh, but don't want to spend too much time with them. No? Uh, this, uh, this, uh, even animals, uh, we want to be friendly to them. right? Uh, so with uh, human beings uh, also, we can just be friendly uh, without uh, uh, looking down on them. Uh, the Buddha says uh, that if we practice the uh, Dhamma Vinaya correctly, uh, we don't look down on anybody, even if they uh, don't hold the precept or they don't uh, follow the Dhamma. Uh, we just uh, pity them. Uh, we know they are going to a, uh, not a good destination of rebirth. Uh, uh, some people you just can't help. Uh, they won't listen to you. Uh, so you don't, don't need to make effort uh, you, if you know they're not going to listen to you. Uh, so we just uh, maintain some friendliness. Uh, some um, characteristics uh, uh, some uh, of some people uh, which are quite difficult to change uh, uh, this uh, ill will or anger is one of them and to overcome this uh, there are two ways uh. one is to learn the Dhamma more uh. when we learn the Dhamma more uh, then we learn to be humble uh be more humble, not to be so arrogant, not be so not to be so domineering. We remember some of the suttas uh, we heard, uh, the Buddha says uh, that there are certain uh, unwholesome states uh, that uh, we should get rid of. Uh, domineering character uh, and uh, arrogance and uh, um, being very strong in your views and all that. Uh, so learning the Dhamma is one way la, when we study more of the Buddha's words. Uh, we learn uh, these things are not good for us. La. So if they are not good for us, uh, why do we keep uh, uh, doing it? La, because uh, we're going to pay for it. Uh, and sometimes uh, the result uh, is much worse than you can imagine. I always like the quote, to quote this example. Uh, one of our devotees told me uh, that the, he had an auntie, uh, and this auntie uh, has a very nasty uh, temper, uh, very prone to anger and hatred. So two days before she passed away, uh, the two Dracula teeth came out, very long, long Dracula teeth came out. Fangs, uh, and the children were surprised, and, and, and they tried to cover the mouth. They could not cover it. Uh, and then uh, two days later, when she died, uh, the two teeth disappeared. That shows uh, that she was going to be reborn as a ghost uh, with that long teeth. Uh. So when we, you know, our character is such. Uh, if you, uh, as we say, ngau ching. Uh, 
uh, Wu Ke, your, your character is like an animal, you will be reborn in the animal realm. Uh, and if you are like this, uh, this uh, ghost type of character, uh, selfish and bad character and all, uh, angry and all this, uh, you'll be born as a, as a fierce ghost. Uh, uh, so it's not worth it. Uh, uh, you don't know how much you have to pay for it. Uh, this round of rebirths, uh, our karma makes us suffer for a long time. Uh. The other way uh, is sometimes people find very hard to change uh, because we don't have the strength of mind. Uh, a lot of weaknesses, uh, uh, for example, like being a, a drug addict, being an alcoholic, uh, all these things, uh, and also having a lot of anger. Uh, it's very hard to change uh, because we don't have the strength of mind to change. Uh. So meditation uh, is one way. Uh, when we meditate, uh, we become calmer and calmer. Uh, and if you can attain to this uh, assess concentration, uh, upachara samadhi, which is very near to jhana, as I mentioned, uh, the, the sutta says, uh, uh, brightness wells up from within you, uh, and then you feel so peaceful. Uh. After that, uh, even if you have reason to get angry, uh, so you don't want to get angry. Because you know uh, when you get angry, uh, all the upsets your system. Uh, uh, a lot of people who have a lot of uh, temper, uh, they, get, they get headache, you know, they get migraine, because their temper is too bad. So it's not worth it. Uh, so two two ways. Uh, one is to be strong uh, in the mind. Uh, the other one is to know the, the, the Dhamma. Uh, when you know the Dhamma, then you know uh, the consequences. Uh, uh, as some suttas say, uh, if somebody offers you a drink, uh, it's the most delicious drink in the world. Uh, uh, the, the, not only the flavor, even the aroma, uh, it's so good, uh, but it is mixed with a bit of what we call it, cyanide, uh, arsenic, uh, uh, a bit of poison. Uh, you know, uh, if you drink it, uh, you're either going to die or you're going to be half dead uh, with, the, with the suffering. Uh, are you, do you want to drink it? Uh, it might be the most delicious drink in the world, but it's not worth it. Uh. <laughs> Somebody tempts you or so, you don't want it uh, because you know it's not good for you. So the Buddha used this simile uh, to see a lot of these things uh, in the world uh, are like that. Uh, seems very delicious, uh, seems very attractive. Uh, but actually, uh, uh, as uh, they say, what, uh, uh, how do you say it in Cantonese? Sin tim hao fu. Sin fu. Sin tim. Sim team, how fool. A lot of things in the world are like that. Sim team, how fool. Uh, so, just like the poisonous drink, uh, it's so delicious, uh, but after you take it, you have to pay for it. Uh, so, a lot of things in this world are like that. Mara's uh, bait, the Buddha always says, Mara's bait, uh, tempt us. Uh, so, you are foolish, you are covered with delusion. Uh, uh, there's some sutta, I think we, we, we read, uh, somebody who's very thirsty. Uh, and he's blur blur. Uh, somebody offers him this, this uh, like uh, most delicious drink in the world, uh, like cappuccino coffee. <laughs> the smell also so good. Uh, blur blur, you quickly drink it. Uh, uh. But if you are not blur blur, uh, you think carefully. Uh, Buddha says whenever we want to do anything, uh, before we do, we reflect. Reflect well. Uh, then when we are doing it also, uh, we must reflect what we are doing. Is it correct or not? And after doing also, uh, we must reflect again. That's how to purify our three karmas, the Buddha always says. Before doing, I uh, think carefully, while doing and after doing. Uh, so it's only somebody uh, who doesn't know the Dhamma and also because his mind is very blurred, uh, that he doesn't think carefully like this. Uh. And this uh, you, know, you see quite often in the newspaper, uh, somebody uh, at a moment of weakness, uh, he rapes the daughter or rapes the granddaughter. Uh, then later he regrets. Uh, too late, are they? Uh, uh, so a lot of other things. Sometimes you find the the paper, father and son quarrel. Uh, suddenly the son take the 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 parang uh, and hack the father to death. Uh, after that, we regret. Mm. So when we are not in control of our mind, uh, we are blur blur. Uh, at that moment, uh, we uh, we are insane. Uh, at that moment, we are overcome by our emotions. Uh, uh, 
temporarily we are insane, we do things, uh, later we regret. That's why it's so important uh, to learn the Dhamma and to meditate, uh, clear our mind uh, so that we don't be blur blur. Uh, uh. That's a problem with a lot of people. Uh, we don't take the Dhamma seriously enough. Uh, you don't see the value of the Dhamma that it is going to benefit you for many, many lifetimes. Uh, so a lot of people don't take it seriously enough. Uh, so we learn a bit of Dhamma, but after that we, we, we don't want to devote too much time. Uh, but it's worth the trouble to devote uh, as much time as you can uh, to learn the Buddha's words, to listen to the CDs uh, on the Nikayas, and then after that to spend your time to meditate. Uh, because you think about it, uh, life is very short. How much time do we have? Oh, you don't have much time, uh, especially if we are old, uh, we even have less time. Uh. So, whatever time we have now, uh, if you don't use it wisely, uh, at the end of life, uh, you see a lot of people, they regret, yeah, I didn't live my life properly. A few years ago, one of my monk friends, he died of cancer. When he had cancer, he didn't believe or so. He didn't believe the doctor told him he had cancer, refused to believe. No. And uh, when I went to see him the last time, uh, he told me uh, that he realized uh, he, didn't, he didn't lead a very good monk's life. <laughs> a lot of things probably he thought he should have done, he didn't do. So you see, uh, even wear the robe already and uh, still can waste your time. Uh, so very careful, uh, you have to be very careful. A lot of people are like that. Uh, at the end of life, uh, they regret this, they regret that. That's why I always tell people, uh, in life, uh, many things, uh, the chance only comes once. We, only, we walk through life uh, only once. Uh, if you don't use it properly, uh, at the end, uh, you regret. Uh, and you regret not just that moment, you know, you regret for many lifetimes. Uh, when you have to pay for it, you have to suffer. Mm -hmm. So, the Dhamma teaches us to be skillful in life. Uh, uh, that's the purpose of the Dhamma, to lead a skillful life, not to lead a careless life. A lot of people lead a careless life, uh, and then they have to pay for it with tears. Uh. Okay.